Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Kevin Wallace, and in this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a section from a recent webcast I did. That webcast was all about wireless networking, and the particular section that we're gonna replay for you in this YouTube video is on antenna theory. We're gonna talk about directional antennas and omnidirectional antennas. We'll compare the kind of antenna you might see in a Cisco access point like this, with uh, something like this, like a dipole antenna. And we'll talk about how we can plot and better visualize the radiation patterns of these different antenna types. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and like this video below and subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now, let's take a look at this replay from our webcast on antenna theory. But let's talk antenna types, shall we? Because different antennas are gonna be used for different applications and we need to know what to pick. And when we talk about antenna types, we're really concerned with the radiation pattern. We wanna be able to visualize what's the coverage area? What area is gonna be covered by this antenna? And it's not enough to just visualize it in a 2D X and Y axis like you might be used to, to graphing two-dimensional graphs. No, we need a third axis. We need to go into three dimensions here. And in this third dimension, we can visualize these shapes like a, think of a beach ball, a big beach ball. That's sort of a spherical shape. That's sort of the coverage area of one of our, one of our antenna types that we're going to be talking about. So we want to visualize these, th these three, uh, these 3D shapes. And one, um, once we go into three dimensions, let's take that beach ball analysis again. In order to visualize it, we need to look at it from a couple of angles. I mean, if I just look, if I'm just sitting on the side of it, I'm just seeing the side view. If I look down from the top, I'm just seeing the top view. So I need a radiation pattern for both views. A couple of terms for you. If I am plotting out what's happening if I'm, uh, if I'm kind of looking down on things, I'm looking down on what's happening horizontally, if we cut that beach ball in half, if it didn't explode on us, we would be looking at the H plane, the horizontal plane. So if I'm looking down on my coverage area, I'm looking down on my H plane. What if we cut that beach ball vertically and I'm looking at the up and down coverage area? That's the E plane. That's the elevation plane. So when, uh, when you're buying these access points, if you get into the technical specs, you'll see pictures in many cases of, of radiation uh, plots showing their coverage area. And that plot is gonna be on this little 360 degree plot area like you see here. And let's take a look at a couple of examples. For, uh, and I apologize, my, my picture is obscuring one of the words there. That's, let me, uh, let me fix that. I don't want to block anything. In fact, I'll turn my camera off when we go out to do the live demos earlier or a little bit later. I don't want to block anything. But uh, here we're looking at an omnidirectional antenna. Now an omnidirectional antenna, the goal is for it to go out equally in all directions, like the beach ball example I gave you earlier. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the radiation pattern of a couple of different types of, uh, of omnidirectional antennas. And one of them looks a lot like this guy that we that we took a look at earlier. Let me just unscrew one of these antennas. And this is called a dipole antenna. And remember we calculated, I showed you how to do the calculation for uh, the wavelength of uh, the 2.4 gigahertz band. And it was 4.9 inches, if you remember. Um, a dipole antenna works like this. There are a couple of wires that go up this antenna and right in the middle, right in the middle, it, uh, there are, each of these wires break off in different directions. And I think I can draw this better than explain it. So let me get my tablet and draw this. A dipole antenna typically has a wire going up and it goes one, in one direction, another wire going up and it goes out in the other direction. Now generally, uh, and by the way, that's when the wires go in the two directions, that's what's happening here. So imagine the wire going about halfway up and one wire going down, one wire going up. That's a dipole antenna. And 
in general, when we think about dipole antennas, the, the, how long they are makes a big difference. Typically, this is one half of the wavelength. That total antenna range is one half of the wavelength. So each of these little wires, they would be one quarter of the wavelength. And we said that the entire wavelength was, was about 4.9 inches. Okay, half of that would be 2.45 inches. So that's how far the wires would go in each direction. Now, these guys, they may have a couple of antennas in them. You, you might say, that's more than, that's more than, uh, than the 2.45 inches. Yeah, but this also does 5 gigahertz. Now, I've not peeled one of these apart to see how they're done, but I'm guessing one might have some, a 5 gigahertz antenna here and a 2.4 gigahertz antenna here. But that's, that dictates the shape of those. Now, what about... Uh, what about one of these little saucer guys? Now these are not using dipole antennas because think of it, can you imagine, these have a lot of antennas inside of them. There's really not room to put a lot of antennas inside of there. So they're using a different type of antenna because you don't have to always be at one half of the wavelength. Uh, you can have harmonics and uh, we don't want to get too much in, into antenna theory. In fact, no kidding. When I got, uh, when I was going through electrical engineering, the, I, I thought the most complicated, difficult task of anything I studied, anything I looked at in AI or robotics or anything, was antenna theory. That was crazy hard. It gets really, 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 really um, in depth. But I just want to give you a visual of radiation patterns right now and understand a little bit about how the how the antennas are constructed. With a dipole antenna, it's going to look like. This, uh, it's going to look like a circle when we're looking down. Look at the H-plane graph, and it's going to be because we're going out in an equal, an equal amount all the way around this, which so radiating out in every direction equally. But if you look at the E-plane, the elevation plane, we're looking at it from the side. We're going to notice that even though we're supposed to be going out equally in all directions, at the very tip, at the very top, and at the very bottom, it's almost zero. Just the, just the way it's designed, we're, we're trying to radiate away from those wires inside here. There's really no surface area to be radiating down or radiating up. So if we were to put this in a three-dimensional shape, this kind of antenna gives us much like a donut coverage, <laughs> to, to be honest. It's kind of like a donut. And that might be okay, but a better solution if you really want and true omnidirectional antennas where you go at equally in all directions would be to use something like I, I was showing you earlier because this has different antennas in here pointing in different directions and this will give you that beach ball like coverage area all the way around. Uh, now those are trying to go equally in all directions but sometimes we'll have an application where we need to go, we need to focus our energy. We don't want to go. We don't want to disperse it in all directions. We want to focus it. Uh, maybe we're going between two buildings, or maybe we're going down a long hallway. And I don't want to put a bunch of those all the way down this massive hallway. I'd like to send a beam directly down the middle of that hallway. For cases like that, we could use uh, different. Uh, we could use directional antennas. I've already showed you an example of a of a patch antenna. This is what I have it out at my pool area right now. Uh, this it mounts outdoors and it covers th this one area of the pool. And you could have a Yagi antenna, one's pictured here. That's gonna give you sort of moderate range. If you want longer range, you can use a dish antenna or a parabolic antenna. But those are some examples of directional antennas. What do their plots look like? Well, let's imagine going down that hallway again. If we're looking at the H plane, if we're looking down, notice that almost all of the signal, there's a couple of lobes that come out based on the physical construction of the antenna, but the majority of the, uh, of the power is going in one direction. It's going down that long hallway. So instead of installing a bunch of, a bunch of those access points on the ceiling and have a bunch of circles going down our hallway, we're just using all of our power to shoot right down the hallway. And that's, there are applications where that is your best choice. So just to kind of sum up, omnidirectional, you're going to get uh, lower gain in any particular direction because you're dispersing your power equally in all directions. But if that's what you need, if you need, if you want to put one in the middle of your office and service all the surrounding cubicles, yeah, that's the way to go. 
But if you want to cover two, between two buildings or down a long hallway, or you want to target something very specifically, yeah, think about a directional antenna.